Hello, yeah, welcome to the teacher channel. Thank you so much. Thank you for visiting the channel. If this is your first time of visiting this, uh, this uh, great channel, this life saving channel, uh, please, please subscribe. And I want to thank you for that. You can like the videos. You can share the videos as well. There are many other videos also on this channel that you can watch. And uh, of course, if you have subscribed before, I say thank you so much. All you can do now is to like the video and to share the video. Of course, I want you to apply the video, use it. Okay, the content of the video is going to help you so that you will be able to do first aid very proficiently, very effectively. That is the essence of this uh, channel. We want to give knowledge so that we know and understand what we are doing. So this is emergency system management. Okay, the focus is on primary survey. Remember that there are four stages when you perform CPR. And uh, so emergency scene management is a step-by-step -step way of doing first aid. Step-by-step -step way of helping somebody in need. That is simply what emergency scene management is about. There are four uh, broad stages involved. Uh, uh, since survey is stage number one, primary survey stage number two, uh, then secondary survey is stage number three, and ongoing patient care. Today is stage number two, that's what I want to talk about, which is very important. This is a big, big, big one. Okay, since survey is most more or less you do it for yourself because you are checking safety um, and then taking care of your protection, some legal issues like obtaining permission. That is since survey, the very first uh, 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 step or the very first stage. Now, after that, you come to stage number two, which is primary survey. And primary survey is about the patient. That is when you focus on the patient. What is primary survey? Primary survey is a rapid, um, rapid uh, um, assessment. So rapid, so assessment, okay, rapid assessment to determine to determine if the patient if the patient is in a life threatening condition life threatening condition so this is what um, what primary service is about is a rapid examination rapid assessment of the patient. So you're assessing the patient rapidly, quick assessment. And why are you doing this assessment? You want to determine if the patient is in a life-threatening condition, life-threatening condition. So this is why you do primary survey. So rapid examination to determine if the patient the person you want to help, if that patient is in a life-threatening condition, you need to determine that. You need to assess for that when you do first aid. It doesn't matter when it is at home, at work, outside home, anywhere in, in at, at school, in the office. It doesn't matter. Anywhere emergency has happened, you have to do, go through those stages. Since survey first, primary survey. Now, primary survey is about the patient. You want to assess the patient. So there are four things you need to assess before you can conclude, before you can say 
that the patient is in a life-threatening condition or not. Until you assess four of them, you may not be able to come to a meaningful logical conclusion as to whether this patient is in life-threatening condition. So it is very, very important that you check four, do, four of those variables. There are four things you must check on this patient, four areas of assessment, and you have to do that very rapidly. So I'm going to use um, four letters to represent that. One is R, another letter is A, and then B, C. So R, A, B, C. So you have to assess. So you have to assess. So when you assess, so your assessment, your assessment has to, you have to assess the R, you have to assess the A, you have to assess the B, you have to assess the C of the patient. Okay. R means responsiveness. So you want to make sure uh, you want to check if if this patient is responsive or not. So responsiveness is what R stands for. And then A way, okay, A way. So you want to check the A way of the patient. You also want to check breathing. You want to see how is the breathing. How is the breathing and then circulation? Okay, so these are the four areas that you must assess before you can decide, before you can say that somebody's life is in danger or not in danger. So number one, check the patient's responsiveness. How do you do this? You know, just shout, hey, hey, are you okay? Can you hear me? Okay, and then you can also tap the uh, shoulder. Are you okay? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? So when you do this, you are checking whether this person is conscious. You are checking whether this person is responsive. Whether this person can actually pick the stimulus or stimuli. So your voice is a, stimuli, a stimulus. Okay, your tap, when you do this, that is a stimulus. So anybody who is conscious, anybody who is responsible should be able to respond to that. Okay, that is a mark of, you know, somebody being, uh, being conscious. Okay, um, so you also need to check the airway. So the airway starts from the nostril and runs through the mouth to the lungs. It's a passageway. So oxygen goes through the this passageway, this airway, carbon dioxide. So when you breathe in, when you breathe out, that passageway is what you call airway. So you need to check if that airway is open. Is it open? Because that is another factor that determines if somebody is in a life-threatening condition or not. Then breathing, okay? So you have to check breathing. Breathing is important. So that is another factor. If somebody is not breathing well, the person's life is threatened. So you also need to check uh, circulation. Circulation. Okay. So uh, how do you check circulation? You look at the skin color or uh, the person's lip. It has to it must be pink. So if somebody's uh, somebody's uh, skin is not normal looking um, in terms of uh, color, um, for instance, if it is pale, okay, if it is pale or cool, let's assume that somebody is um, not in in a, in in, a, in in an environment that is. Uh, that is low in temperature. Um, so somebody is inside, the, is indoor, and the body is still cool, so cool. So that is a sign that circulation is not good. You also have to check, um, check for bleeding, blood. So if you see blood, that is a, a sign that circulation has been compromised. Circulation is not good. So 
Um, so when how do you how do you check um, airway? So you check airway by if the person is conscious. Let's assume let's assume you say, hey, are you okay? Can you hear me? And somebody looks at you. Okay. So that means that person is responsive. So you need to now check if this person's airway is open. How do you check if somebody who is conscious, if that person's airway is open? How do you check? How do you check for a uh, airway in somebody that is conscious? The answer is, can the person talk? So if somebody can talk to you, then uh, the, the airway is open. If somebody cannot talk, something is wrong with the person's airway. So talking uh, is an indicator that somebody's airway is open. So breathing, how do you check breathing? So for somebody who is a, who is a breathing normally, the chest should be rising and falling. Okay, so if somebody is unconscious, um, so I tap here, are you okay, can you hear me? And the person did not respond. Then I do what you call healthy chin lift, and then I check uh, the chest rise and fall. Okay, uh, one for one thousand, two for two thousand, three for three thousand, four for. So you count one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, up to ten. So five to ten seconds. So five to ten seconds. You see whether the chest is rising and falling. Do that for five to ten seconds and then make your conclusion from there. If somebody is, if somebody is breathing, the chest should be rising smoothly and falling. Okay? Uh, usually for an adult, you expect the person to breathe between 12 to 20 times in one minute. Okay? So that's how you check for breathing. Look for chest rise, rise and fall. Okay? And um, so, so now after you have checked R A B C, you now have to make your conclusion. You now remember that the essence, the reason why you do this assessment in the first place is to determine if the person is in life-threatening condition, and you need to check R responsiveness, A airway, B breathing, C circulation. Okay. You need to check four of them before you can conclude. So let's assume that after you have checked everything, now when do you conclude that this person's life is threatened? So the answer is, if any of this is affected by that emergency, if any of the R, A, B, C, any of them, I say any, even if it is one. So you don't have to wait until all of them are affected. One of them that is significantly impacted has put this person in a life-threatening condition. Okay? So that is your conclusion. So somebody is in a life-threatening condition. Somebody is in a life-threatening condition if any of these has been affected by that emergency. What that means is that if you remove any of this from anybody, that person's life may be terminated. Just randomly take any of them out. Take any of them randomly. Breathing. Without breathing, how far can somebody live? If the airway becomes blocked, how far will the person go? Let's assume the circulation is not good. The blood is not circulating properly, or the heart is not pumping effectively. That is also a life threatening condition. So this is what you do uh, during primary survey. Very, very important. And of course, if the person's life is threatened, you have to call 911. And you have to use urgency because this is a life threatening emergency. So um, in the course of the training, there are all, there are many life threatening situations that will be discussed. Okay, so thank you very very much. I believe that you now know how to assess a patient for life threatening condition during primary survey. 
So thank you and uh, I believe you are going to watch out for other videos in this series and of course other videos. Thank you. Bye.